it is time for another show of The Gold Mine, where I get to talk to entrepreneurs. My name is Casey, I'm your host, and today's entrepreneur guest is an artpreneur, or an artistpreneur, an artist who's also an entrepreneur, is Mary Elizabeth Peterson. Let's get the show started. You are an artist, art, artpreneur, yes. um, artistpreneur. Did you grow up in an environment of entrepreneurs? No. Um, what's interesting is I'm the oldest of four. My father was a high school history teacher. My mother was a nurse. Neither of my parents would call themselves creative. Um, both of my parents, um, you know, worked, uh, my mother worked in the school system. My father worked in the school system. Um, they did not have entrepreneurial aspirations, but they were both very inquisitive people, very questioning, lifelong learners. So that was definitely there. Um, the four of us are all involved in very creative fields. So it's a running joke of the family, like where did it all come from? <laughs> um, but, our, but our parents were very, very supportive in the sense of bringing us for um, really great experiences. You know, my mother did not know art, but my mother took us to museums. You know, that was our entertainment. Um, that's, those are the kinds of things that we did. At what point did you come to the conclusion that that was a road you were going to take being an entrepreneur? Well, I think that's, um, that's just part of my DNA. I mean, I've always been a really high achieving person. I've always been somebody who, um, if I have one ability that played well in the corporate world is that I'm the person that can see what's coming up next. And I'm usually um, already making plans towards that next thing before the rest of the people in the room are even asking the questions. Um, so in that vein, I've recently launched my own brand of art reproductions. So I am offering my exclusive look um, as, as very high quality art reproductions. And I, I have done that basically um, after having licensed some of my images for many years and for selling, I have sold many of my images through William Sonoma Home and Pottery Barn, Lillian August, Ballard Designs, etc. So there's definitely, I, I saw that there was definitely a following and definitely a desire for my sort of higher caliber art um, in the design and decor arena. And um, I, I've, I've decided to launch my own brand. And as far as I know, uh, my brand's called Abstract Fabulous, by the way. <laughs> and um, as far as I know, there are very few artists that have done that yet, but I, I expect that's going to happen more and more. Well, being that you mentioned that, that was my next question. I noticed on sure. your website that a lot of your art can be purchased at different stores. Uh -huh. How did you get what were the steps you took to do that? Because I know that's something many artists want to do and yes. they don't know how to um, do it. I get that question a lot. Um, so um, when I was having difficulty getting gallery representation, I determined that I was going to have to kind of forge my own pathway and it was going to look a little bit different than the traditional art model. And um, quite frankly, I got a lot of flack from other artists about why I was selling work online. Um, initially, it was really looked down upon. Um, a lot of, you know, serious artists thought that I was, you know, selling out, that I wasn't someone to be taken seriously for her work. And I'm happy to say that none of that's come to pass because all those folks are right there with me online. <laughs> um, but I... Um, I'm sorry, I lost track of the question, Casey. What was your- How did you get your artwork into stores? Oh, um, so interestingly enough, 
Um, there are a number of companies in the United States who license images and um, bring them into um, the commercial and hospitality industry for use in hospitals, hotels, et cetera, that kind of thing. And they also sell very high quality reproductions to interior decorators. As it happens, by virtue of me having been on Saatchi Art, I was contacted by one of these licensing firms um, almost 11 years ago now. And that's how my um, work was brought into and is now sold via these luxury home designers. So um, there are now, as the art world and the art market is changing, there are a number of online art licensing firms, art publishers, um, print on demand websites. There are all sorts of people now occupying that space. And um, I'm still represented with my original company and I recently um, signed a contract with another company on the West Coast. So I have licensed um, almost 200 images and um, what, what sort of funny came as a huge shock to me is after doing this licensing for all this time, I went back onto Pinterest at the beginning of the pandemic, just looking around on there. And unbeknownst to me, I had something in the neighborhood of four to 5,000 people a day pinning images of my work that had been sold in, from these luxury retailers and I had absolutely no idea. So the, the philosophy that I have embraced for myself is that my art finds where it needs to be. And I believe that in all seriousness, I, I walk that, I talk that, I live that. My art finds the people where it needs to be. That is what happens. I put it out there. I go to shows, I go to openings, I go to museums, I talk to everybody, I love art, I get off on art, I love other people's art, I get excited for other artists. I try to say yes to every opportunity that comes my way and that's how it's happened for me. And there is something within my art that speaks to people, that calms them, that centers them, that makes them feel good and because of that, my work has grown in a very organic way, almost entirely independent of me pushing, uh, of public relations, of, of any of these other, you know, techniques, programs, books, seminars. I know a lot of artists right now are, you know, um, attaching their wagons to the star of other artists who, quote, have a method for breaking through. I don't have that. I don't do that. I put it all behind my work. I love making art and my art finds its people. That's it. You had mentioned that um, a lot of the artists was criticizing you and yeah. now they're doing the exact same thing. And I, I have a feeling none of them actually took the time to apologize. But I believe <laughs> that is out of all of the problems in the art world, the visual, the fine and the performing arts, is when something new comes along, they criticize it. And then when it becomes yes. a bandwagon, they follow it and they never apologize, they never acknowledge. And I think that is so wrong that the art world still thinks there's wrong and right ways to do art. And it's like, no, yeah. it's just the artist's way, that's it. And there is, yeah. just because you may not agree with it doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means right. that's not what you want to do. But I always say, don't criticize it because one day you might be doing it. You, right. know, you just don't know. So I'm glad you didn't allow them to stop you from yeah. doing your thing. Yeah. So. Well, and no also, also to your point about there not being a straight path for anybody, you know, no one's artist journey looks the same as anyone else's. And that's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different. And as an artist, I really go out of my way to mentor other people and to help other people. I'm the kind of person that's reaching back to pull somebody up with me. That's, that's true. Um, 
I am a little bitter about some of those <laughs> folks that didn't ever apologize, but that's okay because I, I just choose not to live that way. Sorry, getting emotional. No, no, no worries. So can you give, I'll say two tips to artists out there on how to be an art, art entrepreneur, two things, because even though every um, entrepreneur's roadmap is different, there are still some things that you yes. must know before you start. So two things yeah. you can, um, tips you can give them. Um, only two, huh? <laughs> um, well, first of all, you can do three. First of all, put a big shell around yourself and tough and toughen up your outer core because just the process of art school or gaining your skills, if you're self-taught, you're going to face a lot of criticism. And some of it's going to be well-intentioned and some of it's not. And some of it's going to hurt if you let it. But you need to stay on your own path and you need to get your core skills. And you need to remember that when a professor or a mentor is giving you feedback, it's not personal. It's all in the, in the service of improving your work. So focus on improving your work and let the hurts go. I would also say to tag along with that, get used to, get used to rejection because it's a big, big part of this. And um, you can't take it personally every time or it will wear you down. And if one door is not open to you, find another door, find another door. There are multiple doors. Um, so get your skills, get your toolbox in order. Uh, get, a, get a tough skin because you're gonna need it. The other thing I would say is do not be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, I'm a very friendly person by nature. I know a lot of people aren't. If you're, if you're quieter, that's okay. But try to have meaningful conversations with other people in the art world, in the art industry, people that sell art, people who buy art, people who go to see art. Expose yourself to the thoughts of as many different people involved in the art world as you possibly can. Read as much as you can. Um, stay informed about what's happening in the art world. You know, right now the hot thing is the NFTs and, you know, there's, there's a lot of criticism of that right now. But, you know, what, what's going to happen with that? I'm not sure where I stand on that myself but we'll see um so um, those those three things i think are very important um from personal experience i would say believe in yourself believe in your art believe in your work believe that your work will find the people that it needs to find where it needs to be seen my career has um done amazingly well uh, because other people have championed my work because they've liked the work and they've promoted the work, not me. So, you know, see a bigger picture, have a path um, for where you think you want to go, but be very organized, but be very flexible because you need to be able to shift direction and pivot quickly. Now, um, um, follow-up question. Do you actually know what an NFT is? Because I've, d I've done my research and I've heard people explain it, but I still have no clue what it is. Uh, well, I guess it's called a non-fungible blah, 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 blah. Um, I mean, it's basically a digital, my understanding is it's basically a digitized form of artwork, right? So it's sort of the next level or the next iteration of conceptual art, I think. Um, you, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of like a thought-based form, you know, like an intangible thing, an artistic concept that can be presented and sold. 
Is it like a, just like a JPEG? Like, like yeah, a picture? It, oh, so it's just yeah. a regular picture that you... It pretty much is. The, the, the big one that gained all of the um, uh, notoriety most recently was the artists did like digital renderings or digital doodles or digital diary type stuff every day for like a year. Okay. And then my understanding is then he like packaged it and displayed it like every day of the year is a little square. Okay. Yes. So it kind of makes this like gigantic mosaic. Right. And then you can click on the individual areas and you can see like what's embedded in that. Uh, okay. Okay. And so that's what was sold. All right. Cool. And there are squares within that that are highly evolved, you know, that like took hours of laboring, you know, digital rendering, digital design or, or video clips or whatever. And then there are other things that are like, you know, a stick figure, <laughs> a drawn out stick, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's sort of like a hodgepodge of things. And a lot of people are questioning, you know, is it art? Well, it's, you can't really question what art is. I always say yeah. art is the same as beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. You, de yeah. you decide yeah. and you don't get to tell someone else their art isn't just because you don't like it. I mean, there are a lot of people that are very excited and very energized about it, you know? I'm, I'm always up to something. I'm always into what's new because it's like yeah. we can't stay in. Or me we too. Have, we gotta change. I mean, you know, that's why, you know, my mother asks me all the time, like, how come you don't pay sunflowers anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she loves those paintings and I get it, but you know what? I need, I need the novel. I need the interesting. I need the new. Yes. That keeps me alive. So with that said, is there any project you're working on at the moment? that's almost done or in the process of being done? I, I just finished a huge project. I um, did 15 epic large paintings. I think the smallest one is five feet by 70 by seven feet. Um, there it's opening in a show out in Las Vegas oh, wow. next Monday, April the 11th. Um, it's the largest work that I've ever done. I do love to work large uh, and these are big. Um, so I'm excited about that. I, after having that big burst of energy and working around the clock since January to prepare for that show, I'm now kind of taking a beat, taking a pause, and I'm feeling like, I'm not sure exactly what's bubbling up to the surface, but I'm feeling a more simplified, almost color field kind of more zen less complicated kind of work is coming to the surface for me the way i work is very spontaneous i don't i don't make any sketches beforehand i don't plan it out i i'm very i, I have you know that toolbox of very old world skills and I just get in there on that canvas and I go. So we'll see. But I think there is something a little more restful, a little less complicated coming down the pike for me. And, th and that's, that tracks with what happens with a, with a painter, you know, as they reach you know, the middle of their career, you know, their work tends to get edited down into some core elements. And I actually am looking forward to that. That is all the time we have for you today on today's episode of the 
gold mine. I want to thank our guest, Mary Elizabeth Peterson, for stopping on by this show. And of course, you, the audience, for viewing the show. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. Have a great week.